VLSI technology has brought tremendous benefits to our everyday life since its occurrence. VLSI circuits are used everywhere. Real applications include microprocessors in PCs or workstations, chips in graphic card, chips in digital cameras, smartwatches, smartphones, processors in automobiles, etc. Today's IC design is so complex that manual approach is almost impractical. Design automation is used everywhere and throughout the entire flow of VLSI design. And ASICs are a class of VLSI chips, which mean they are designed for specific applications. Even though we are discussing ASIC design flow in this video, it almost applies to general purpose processor design such as microprocessor design as well, since there are very few changes compared to this flow. So let's get started with the ASIC design flow. It all starts with design specification and these design specifications are obtained from MRD. MRD stands for Market Research Department and this department collects information from market and finds out what is the requirement in the market. It's very necessary to have an MRD team because we can't start working on any project without knowing whether it is really needed or not in the market. Essentially, at the end of the day, it's just a business. And specification team decides the specifications based on the research done by MRD, such as speed, of the chip, the power, the area, also the pin width, etc. With these specifications, an architecture is developed. Architecture refers to the entire layout of the chip, but this does not mean that it contains the implementation details such as timing details and uh, register information and etc. It can also be an instruction set architecture if you compare it to the microprocessor design, but sometimes this architecture definition is just an abstraction which is given to the software design team. Since this architecture is at very high level of detail and no implementation detail is explained, it is broken down into microarchitectural definition. The microarchitecture will define few things such as the implementation details of pipeline depth, the number of pipeline, if there is parallelism, what how are we going to implement the parallelism, the catch size, the cat hit frequency, and the area of the silicon, bus width, data, bus width of the data and memory, and peak power, etc. So, so many details will be explained in the uh, microarchitectural definition. And with these information, RTL design will take and write a HDL code, hardware description language, either VHDL or Verilog. So this is also a very high level uh, code which is developed which almost we can compare it with the other uh, programming languages where we use variables and registers are similar to variables here so the output of this rtl design will be the rt level netlist which is register transfer level netlist and this entire flow is called rtl design and the output of this is basically the netlist at rt level which will go to the next level, which is RTL verification. This RTL verification is a step where the verification engineer makes sure that RTL design and the output of RTL design is does not have any syntactic errors, number one, and also make sure that the functionality of the RTL design is proper by giving many test cases. He has to cover almost all the test cases so that he can verify that the functionality of the RTL design is proper and as well as the design goals are met. If one of them is wrong, it will be sent back to the RTL design. So he will make sure that whether the design goals are met. If it is no, then it will be sent back to the RTL design. If it is yes, the design goals are met, it will go to the next level, which is logic synthesis plus the design for testability. The second step is basically called RTL verification, the entire flow. So at logic synthesis level, we will have the netlist at RT level as an input and many other inputs such as a logic library and uh, uh, the physical library, etc. And gate level netlist will be generated from logical logic synthesis. Also, the design for testability logic also will be inserted at this phase of the design. It is very important to insert the DFT at this phase of the design because otherwise it will make it very difficult for convergence later. Once the gate level netlist is generated, 
it will be given to check for the logic equivalence check okay this logic equivalence check is a flow where it will compare the netlist which is generated after rtl design which is um, which is the rt level netlist and this is the golden netlist for the lac it will compare this netlist which is gate level netlist with the rt level netlist and if it passes if everything is fine if the functionality is same from both of these sites then it passes it if there is any failure if it will go back to this logical synthesis again makes corrections and sends it back and if it passes then the designer the synthesis guy should carry out pre-layout static timing analysis this is a analysis where uh, no much of data of the cell delay and net delay is given because it's not yet physically placed and routed but it will make sure that timing is okay to some extent and if it passes the timing requirements then it will be sent to the previous step otherwise again the synthesis will uh, happen and this entire flow is basically called as synthesis and the output of this will be given to the physical design which is pnr the placement and routing there's so many steps this entire flow i am showing you is just a very high level of uh, detail there are too many steps uh, within these so it's just not the pnr it's it's uh, placement and routing uh, it will contain the partitioning it will contain the power planning floor planning and many other steps like clock tree synthesis but uh, we are just writing it as placement and routing till here till synthesis it's just logical definition that we are doing after this place uh, the physical design is a place where the circuit is converted from schematic into a physical layout so the placement and routing is where we do the placement of the cells and macros and then do we uh, route and once that layout is ready again an lec the logic equivalence check is made to check uh, whether the netlist uh, out of the layout is same as that of the netlist which is a gate level netlist again if it is Passing that uh, LEC check, it will go forward and we will carry out the parasitic extraction. And once the parasitic extraction is done, post layout static timing analysis is done. It is a sign off level uh, static timing analysis, which means it's the kind of last confirmation that the timing is passing. It is very important to do the STA, which is post layout STA after parasitic extraction because it's where it's the parasitic extraction where we extract the information about resistance and capacitance right so once we know the resistance and capacitances of the wires and also the cell then we can do the real layout uh, static timing analysis and finally we check whether the timing goals are met or not if it is meeting then we go forward or if it is not meeting we will do the placement and routing changes so that the timing is fixed and then we do the steps again and if it is passing the timing then we go for physical verification such as trc lvs and also the reliability verifications uh, such as em the electro migration checks uh, ir drop checks thermal checks and many other stuff and we verify that everything is proper if there are any layout changes done here uh, to fix the issues again we have to start from um, we have to check for these uh, sta okay the timing has to meet again so the changes here no it's not that it's just a single flow it it'll it'll be interdependent sometimes so if there are changes made to fix some things okay and this dfx is designed for manufacturability and testability and uh, reliability and optical optical proximity correction is a step where um, the mask which we generate is made some changes so that it is optimized for um, manufacturing those steps are also taken into consideration and finally uh, it will be taped out and tape out is a step which is named because uh, at the uh, end of the design phase it, it will be sent to the foundry and when it is sent to the foundry uh, in earlier days what have what used to happen is uh, it was sent the data was sent in magnetic tapes and that's the reason why the name is still tape out okay so this entire phase of the design is called as physical design so this entire design cycle is 
so beautifully compartmentalized. When I say compartmentalized, it is divided in such a way that it has created abstraction layers. Because if you see the physical design engineer may not even know what is the RTL design and specification, but he can still work and do whatever his job. That is the abstraction. That's all for now. Thanks a lot for watching. And please do comment in the comment box if you have any doubts or queries. And uh, please do subscribe to my channel. And bye-bye.